in identifying the distinction between those two environments. But what was clear to me is that the choice tsunami was coming when I became superintendent. And you and I know, you cannot outrun a tsunami, you cannot outswim a tsunami, you cannot dive under it and try to survive. The only way to survive a tsunami is to ride its top, ride the crest. So in a choice for a time environment, I decided to dominate the choice. That is why we ramped up our efforts in new magnet programs, exciting programs, robotics, coding, international baccalaureate, in Cambridge programs, capstone programs. You think it, we have it. Forensic science, why kids like CSI, I'll build that program. Anything you can think of, we have it. So this portfolio approach to education, where one size fits none, right? Where we are determined to create as much options as possible, has been our theory of action. We pay close attention to charter schools, and I have shut down charter schools that were not delivering for kids, either from a financial perspective or an academic deliverable perspective. I've also empowered other charter schools that I believe do right by kids. In fact, we are still the only district in the nation uh, that began uh, our own district managed charter schools. In fact, this August, we will be opening a brand new elementary school in one of the fastest growing areas of this year called Ralph. Fully funded by a developer, where they came to us and we partnered. They made the investment, they ceded the land to the school board. $20 million to build a school, we hired the contractor, the architect, but it cost the taxpayers zero, and we are managing the school. That is a hybrid model for charter schools in direct partnership with the school system. I'm very interested in one thing, I mean, the charter school phenomenon in South Florida, actually across the city of Florida, it is one that basically allowed for the proliferation of schools, primarily in communities where the traditional public schools were actually doing very well. They just knew that it would be easy to run these schools and be successful because if you can control your input, you can predict your what? Your outcome. What we don't see here and beyond is successful charter schools in the urban core. Okay? We do not have a single one in mind. Seems like these folks are afraid to really tackle the challenge or the compound challenge of broken communities and broken families and poverty and English language limitation, which in my opinion is often the young. Asian American, Students are both black and English language limited. And they don't venture into those areas. So I want to try to strike a balance between choice but also doing the right thing. And I reject charter schools that do not accept, mysteriously through their lottery system, reject students who are English language limited or reject students who have disabilities, which to me is an appalling immorality because they know if they took those kids, they would have to spend more dollars on services, and probably their average score would dip. And my question to folks who operate those schools is, what kind of society are you teaching your kids when in school they do not see anybody who doesn't look like them? Particularly kids with disabilities. The racial homogeneous conditions in a lot of charter schools is appalling to me as well. So we have to be very, very careful in the way we describe educational success in some of these schools by asking what are the long-term societal implications of this new experiment. And we're keeping it in check here. Fair enough?